Okay, I can tell we're getting near to that time of year as I'm getting increasing questions about which X, Y and Z to buy. Now I've got my recommendations page on my site which is basically an index of awesome stuff that I really like. And it saves me answering the same questions again and again. Yet when it comes to laser cutters, I've been a bit circumspect about recommending specific models to people. Now, this isn't because the brand is hard, it's actually pretty easy at the moment. Just like with 3D printers. Four years ago, I would have hummed and hard about all the different brands, but these days it's quite clearly Bamboo Lab. Well, for lasers, it's Xtool that in my view are the brand to beat. So it's not for that reason that I've held fire. It's just a bit more complex than with FDM printers, as there are different types of laser cutters and they perform quite different roles. For that reason, I thought I'd give you a crash course to lasers. In this, I'll cover why I rate x so highly, the difference between some of their key laser types and help map this to which type suits your interests and hobbies. And even if you don't want a laser cutter, mad, I'll signpost another unknown Xtool device that everyone needs to know about. And it's something that applies to almost any maker, even if you're just into 3D printing. But for now, let's look at fricking lasers. I remember making my first workshop when we moved into this house and it was tools like table saws, track saws and chop saws that were the must-have tools of the moment, allowing accurate, repeatable cuts that opened up a world of possibilities. The world has come on so far since then though and if I was starting a workshop today I'd actually say a 3D printer has become the most key tool in a workshop and laser cutters are the second most useful device. These two tools open up an incredible range of materials to you. Ultra professional accuracy and the ability to actually manufacture pieces again and again. Yet, if 3D printers let you craft utility, precise, handy, and useful things for all over the home, laser cutters let you craft class. You all know how much I love 3D printers, but they can't produce anything like the beauty of walnut, copper, or clear materials. So if you had a two by one meter space to build a workshop, these days I'd actually seriously consider what you wouldn't be able to make with just a 3D printer and a laser cutter. Laser cutters give you five big advantages straight out of the box. They offer eye-watering precision. So all those miscuts and rough edges and dodgy measurements just disappear. You stop thinking about one day table sawing two millimeter accuracy and instantly you can start cutting to hundredths of a millimeter precision. That precision also allows unbelievable detail. You basically go way beyond any 3D printer, let alone hand tools. You wanna etch labels on your 3D prints, burn them. You want to etch that coin with your custom logo, go for it. You want to make custom earrings out of walnut. They create a totally new realm of accuracy and you get the same wonderful repeatability that you get with 3D printers. If you want another of those etched placemats or custom plant labels or wooden boxes or whatever else, you just press the button. And this takes an enormous load off you retaining all of that knowledge on how to make things manually. And with this precision and repeatability, you get exceptional speed and efficiency. Xtool literally take the biscuit with their lasers as you can even set up production lines. But all lasers are way faster than anything that you could do yourself. 3D printers, are amazing, but they're very much limited to plastics and they will be for some time. Lasers deal with enormous ranges of materials, pretty much anything. I mean, I've etched macarons, biscuits, wood, plastic, metal, pumpkins, mother of pearl, slate, glass, 
anything I can get my hands on. I should start a channel called that. One other extra point is unlike 3D printers with their extruders or CNCs with their bits and inkjet printers with their... Don't star me. Laser cutters are just firing a beam of light. So they tend to be much lower maintenance and higher reliability. Obviously, everything wears out eventually, but my x -Tool lasers are very reliable beasts. Okay. You want to take your crafting to the next level and introduce a laser tool to your repertoire. But the question is, what laser type? Well, let me go through three of the types of lasers. Let's start with the science bit. Focus, folks. We're going to talk light spectrums. When you look at a material, the colour you see is, in a way, the colour that it isn't. So a blue piece of acrylic is absorbing all the other colours of the spectrum, but it reflects the blue range. So firstly, this explains why some lasers can etch one colour, like black PLA, quite happily, but it'll make no impact on white PLA. Obviously, exactly the same material, it's just that the colour is different. If we look at the full spectrum, you'll see to the left is gamma radiation, then UV radiation that you get a suntan from, and then we enter the visible spectrum and move into the infrared range and beyond. So laser cutters want their beams to be absorbed by the target material. This heats it up super fast and cuts or etches it. Plotting the three common types of lasers here, you'll see how diode lasers are generally around here for blue lasers and then here for others. And this is key for reasons I'll return to. Fibre lasers exist in the low mid infrared spectrum and CO2 lasers are even higher in the infrared range. How they generate these beams also affects the product. So diode lasers are generally the cheapest. They use semiconductor technology, kind of similar to LEDs, but they emit light in a highly directed beam. CO2 lasers excite gas mixture, primarily CO2, hence the name, using an electrical current, and this creates a high-powered laser beam in the infrared spectrum. Fibre lasers generate light through a glass fibre with a rare earth dopant like a terbium, which is then amplified. All these approaches have impacts, like CO2 lasers are usually bigger as a result, but fundamentally this also means their cutting abilities change too. Ultimately, understanding this helps you see there isn't a right or wrong here. You have to decide based on your interests and passions. To help cut through all this and just zoom into three of Xtool's range, the M1 Ultra, the F1 Ultra and the P2, let's map their capabilities against materials. In terms of materials that they can cut, I'd roughly rate them as follows. You can see that they can all handle a wide range of materials, but the P2 and F1 Ultra etch clear materials like acrylic and glass better. The M1 Ultra is harder to position as it's such a different device. You have to remember it has the ability to physically cut with a blade as well as inkjet print and so much more. So its material flexibility is a bit different. Hence, it has thousands of materials that it can handle. I'm not going to tell you which one is best for you. You really need to look at your own hobbies and pick based on them. But if I was going to give you a broad domain for each, this is how I'd view them. The M1 Ultra is, for me, the crafter's best friend. Its multifunctional capabilities are truly amazing. The ability to incorporate inkjet printing, die cutting, which is cutting with a blade, pen drawing, laser cutting and more, makes this, in my view, the ultimate device at the moment for any craft room. It's hard to look at any other in this space, as this allows such amazing creativity. Its size is just perfect. It's not too big to fit in a craft room, but it's not too small that larger sheets of card or plywood or acrylic can't be dealt with. The P2 is the woodworker's workhorse. 
This is actually why I bought my one. It's got a big bed size, indeed a flipping huge one with its pass-through tech, letting you laser up to 10 feet or three meter long planks if you want. Plywood is obviously easy, but even walnut is ripped through with ease. And if you want to just add perfectly cut acrylic windows to something, just go for it. <laughs> if you've got roped into creating that custom sign for it's just not a problem. This just operates as such a powerful tool to support all your projects. It's awesome. Moving on to the F1 Ultra. Well, this is a detailed maker's marvel. Its fiber laser opens up a whole new realm for anything where you need intricate detail. If you make jewelry, you're gonna love this. Or frosting glasses, custom wooden tags. That powerful fiber laser also opens up hard materials like metals and stone, and not just to etch, but to actually carve them. And then the fact that it also has a diode laser built in as well, makes it an extremely capable device, able to tackle just about anything across the spectrum. It's clearly designed for smaller sized objects and to be a bit more portable. Its batch processing capability and sheer speed makes this a potent device for anyone wanting to run a small home business. Now there's loads of brands out there, so I'm not saying that you can't find really great brands with great lasers, but Xtool has transformed in recent years. Just a few years ago, they were in the pack with laser cutters that looked pretty much like everyone else's. The first laser cutter that I bought was another brand and Here's a few other brands. You see what I mean? But they've transformed in almost every dimension. They went hard at safety. The software moved to a different level of innovation with unique features like curved cutting and extra long material processing, batch conveyors, superb safety sets and more. And their devices are now something, something to behold. They're beautiful devices that look great inside the home, let alone in a workshop. They have some of the best design that I've seen in any consumer device, let alone blooming lasers. I'd actually put Xtool's aesthetic slightly above Bamboo Lab at the moment. Controversial. It's that good. Okay. I'm hoping that you can now see why laser cutters and Xtool specifically are such game changers for makers from etching delicate glassware to carving hard materials, these machines unlock an entire world of precision, speed and creativity that can't be achieved with traditional tools alone. But here's the thing, choosing the right laser for you is about more than just picking the most powerful model. It's about finding the one that matches your creative vision and goals. Yes, these devices are an investment, but I'd say it's worth saving up for quality. I've been down that road of trying to buy a cheaper laser initially, only to end up spending more. With another brand, I bought an open frame laser that needed extensions for larger products. And I had to get proper exhaust fans and add grills and build my own enclosure. And I even had to add a camera just to get decent alignment. And by the end, I'd nearly paid for a premium device without getting premium results. It's certainly a good time of year to snag these at a discount. It's almost painful seeing the price deals at the moment on the Xtool P2 after I paid significantly more. And it's like they're deliberately rubbing it in by releasing the P2S which is even more capable. So check out the links to these three laser cutters to see which one is your ultimate companion. Oh, and if you want to know about the mysterious X-Tool device that I mentioned at the start that everyone needs, regardless of whether you even have a laser cutter, well, I was so impressed that I dedicated an entire video to it. So you're just gonna have to click to watch that next. Go on, click it. Catch you all in a few seconds, folks.